Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to FM23 Youth Factory, episode number four. It was the last episode where the algorithm stuff really mattered. From here on out, if you want to click that like button, do so because you feel like it. Do so because you liked the content of the episode. So let's not worry about that anymore. Let's move on to the task at hand. And the task at hand is the surprise that our current Ability Ones team has found success this season. They're still only mid-table. They're not going to be experiencing promotion I, it's not happening but they're not last they're comfortably mid-table and that is just shocking but we've been making bank and it's not a lot of money but we've been doing well i mean we get a thousand fans that's that's our start point i wanted to make sure there was at least some operating expenses covered and a chance to grow the club and we're finding that that's true because after three straight wins we approached the board once again about improving the training facilities and now on the 2nd of january they have approved it it's going to cost us a quarter of a million which is half the funds that we have right now but this is going to bring our training facilities from a one to a three because in reality there's five stars and they go half star at a time so there's 10 steps in terms of your facilities but behind the scenes, in the editor, there's 20 levels. So this is actually going to bump us from 1 to a 4, because that's going to be the second step. First step, technically, is a 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. So this is going to bring our training facilities along a fair bit. Is it going to make a big difference? Well... No, <laughs> no. In the grand scheme of things, it's not going to make a big difference. One, we have some really, really weak players right now. We need to wait for an intake before we have guys with proper potential, proper ratings. Oh my goodness, they're going to crush the teams in this league when we start out, and we're going to cruise through our first few years quite easily as we try to hang on to players. But once we become amateurs and others pick up wind of the quality we have and start offering something, we might be losing guys for very little because their value is going to be very little. But a training facility with level four is not going to suddenly make us great. And as amateurs, we train two days a week, a couple sessions. That's it. We're not even part-timers and the part-timers, it doesn't get a whole lot better. So it's going to be a long time before we see things improve drastically. We also have no coaching staff. It's a weak combination. But here's what it will do. Two things in particular. One, any decline you're going to see in in players because of how bad the combination of everything is, well, that probability just went down. We're going to see less of a de decline in players. We're not going to see much progression at all at this stage, and getting to a four is not going to, like I said, make that any better. But it's going to make the decline part not as bad. We're not at break-even stage. But here's the thing. To get to a six, you've got to go through a four first. You've got to take it a step at a time. you got to take it a stage at a time. We're making money. These new training facilities that are going to be done in June aren't going to cost us a ton of money. So we're going to continue to make money for at least the remainder of this calendar year. And we can put away enough money to hopefully, especially once we have our, our intake and we have quality and we are winning most every match and cruising through the bottom few levels before we start to meet a challenge. That means we're ticking off the four so that we can tick off the six so that we can tick off the eight. And then somewhere around that eight or a ten with some coaching staff with full time then we're going to start to see players progress one step at a time baby and this this is the first step a come from behind victory against the last place team in the league is a good sign of the tactics working and being capable of something it was at home but a win nonetheless we do lose the other one it's close uh, they scored first, we equalized just minutes later, and then they got the go-ahead not long after. We clearly had a weak performance in that one. 
but honestly, I mean, that's to be expected. Uh, St. Agnes, last time we played, they beat us 3-0 at home. So losing 2-1 on the road is good. Approaching the end of the season, this month is going to be a rough one, though. True Reserves, who sit first place, and Hale, who sit second, are the opponents. Malian Reserves are ninth, and then Illigan is 11th uh, for the following month. You would hope we can get one of those results, and then just like that, you're into the last month of the season. This month, this season, this first season is going by very, very quickly. It's first of April, uh, sorry, first of February now. Get myself tongue tied. Get, get, getting blah, 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 words. I'm getting myself tongue tied. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm, I'm wanting to reach that end of the season here real quick. But before we reach the end of the season, we are going to get our first intake. Should get our first intake. And if I remember correctly, England, it's going to happen in March. So we're looking at next month. We're probably looking at a couple losses this month. So let's get that out of the way and proceed. Uh, I think the intake is going to come a little bit too late for it to matter. Uh, potentially for us to get promotion now. Only one team is promoted. Truro Reserves on 42 points have a 15 point advantage over us. 15 points is five victories. You have to also count on your opponent losing. We're going to count on them probably beating us when we play them in this next match, which therefore is, that's that's that. You're already kind of, it's a little too late by that point with only a handful of matches. We're only playing seven more. Uh, so if Truro beat us here, I think we're all but mathematically done for the current season. But I would say next season we are crushing it in the 11th tier. Absolute stunner here, folks. Truro City Reserves, we've beaten them 2-0 with only 8 shot attempts to their 10. We did keep possession well. Tactically, that has continued to work for us, even though we couldn't translate it into any good chances. 0 .0 0 0.25 is the XG, and they had nearly a goal and a half of XG themselves and just couldn't get one. Now, the, the one that sealed it from Ken Lee came in stoppage time, but let's go ahead and watch uh, some key highlights from this game. This is this is a stunner, folks. Salmon with free kick. And there's the first one. There's the first one. Let's speed this up a little bit here. Drops back to Dunton, back up to Dixon, crosses in, great through ball there, and a huge stop from Woodley. Used his chest to stop that one. Beaten for pace here. Davis. Oh, wow. Recovers. What a recovery there. Because absolutely beaten for pace. Yet, he continues to chase here. He's beaten again really bad. Uh, but Wooly makes a, a really good stop. But Wooly was beat. And he makes the recovery run as he tries to sidestep to beat the keeper. That extra move to the side slowed down his forward progress. And we got back in the play and got, you know, a massive block on that one. Ooh, great chance on the through ball there. Don't take the, the the good option, but we do get a quarter kick out of that one. This is into that stoppage. That's cleared away by Kamara. They're going to get a golden chance to equalize and miss it. Free kick from Ken Lee. Beautiful up in the corner there. Wow. We were 15 points behind entering that match. That's going to cut that gap to 12. Everybody else was more than three points behind them. So regardless of what happened, they were still in first place. But at 12 points with six matches to play, it's there's still hope. There's still hope. I did go ahead and simulate our match against the second place side as well, though. Let's find out what happened with that one. 2-1. Loss on the road. They had a man sent off, but it wasn't until stoppage time. It was too little, too late late to turn the tide we did struggle in this one nobody was horrendously awful that that's i think that's the thing about the level of competition that we have as bad as we are everybody else is just really bad too there's not huge gaps between players in terms of quality everybody's really bad and while our opponents might be slightly better the the tactical 
the formation, the way we play is making enough of a difference. Not with the top couple of teams, where we only managed to get three points against the top couple of teams, but those three points were huge. And they keep us alive with five to play, or do they? With five to play, Hale and Trail Reserves are both now on 42 points. We're on 29. We are 13 points behind with five to play. Now, let's assume we get the youth intake tomorrow. I don't think that's the case. I think it's middle of the month. But let's assume we get it tomorrow. Let's assume we win all five matches. We take 15 points. We're sitting on 44. St. Agnes, Perrinwell, Penryn Athletic they're probably not going to get to 44 points or at least they might not get to 44 points I'd say more likely than not but the top three teams falmouth town reserves Truro reserves hale to exceed 44 points one win for hale one win for Truro reserves they've got 12 and 21 they've got 13 in 21 they are winning not quite 67 percent of the time but well over 50 percent of the time I'd say that's, I don't know, 60, 60%, just off the top of my head without trying to calculate anything. You know, they're winning three out of every five matches that they play. They only have to win one out of the last five. And if they lose all five, Falmouth Town, all they need to do is, you know, win a couple out of their last five. That I don't see happening. Is it possible that we win all five if we get our intake right now? I think that's possible. I think it's more likely that we win four out of five and maybe draw one. They're going to be 15, 16 year old kids with significantly more skill than those around us, we would hope. But I don't think that the other three are going to fall flat on the floor for the last five matches. But for now, we're still mathematically in it for this season, but we're probably looking at next season and maybe moving up a spot or two in the uh, final few matches after the intake happens, which hasn't happened yet, and I think is later in the month, not in the beginning, but we'll see. Until we start moving up the ladder, I'm not going to be too worried about what happens in other leagues, but a very quick look. You need to look quickly if you want to see this. I'm not going to go through them one by one, but Man City, Real Madrid, PSG, Inter Milan... Uh, Bayern Munich, Ajax, Celtic, and those are the heads of the other leagues. Uh, I've got our Norwegian Premier Division, which is not in season right now, as well as uh, MLS, which is only three matches in right now. So, uh, But that's where we're at for the others. I'm going to double check before, uh, before crying, but it's looking like a really bad day for the club. Our only coach which I never even checked if he's a decent coach he's not he's terrible but he was the only coach we had Paul Selkeld U18s is now managing Porth Levin so team from our division have hired our assistant coach away from us so we just lost the only staff member we had besides ourselves. and our intake for year number one apparently is non-existent as a new club, there was nothing happening prior. We didn't have, uh, we don't have staff, so I didn't have anyone to select. Whew, okay. I don't know why they didn't come up, but there they are. They do exist. Whew. Okay. We did get an intake. Uh, we only got one goalkeeper. There's your grade out otherwise current ability and yes i will use current ability in this playthrough as we want to know exactly how good the players are uh, not relying on the assistant managers to find that so uh, i find it interesting to know what you're dealing with what you're up against ethan mclaren not only is the best current ability player in the entire league hands down and quite a few divisions above us, and it's phenomenal. Uh, wow. <laughs> but the potential ability. This guy could be a wonder kid. 
I'm wondering what his description would be. Is he immediately coming in as a Wonder Kid? Is he going to be recognized as a Wonder Kid? And with a professional personality, oh boy, this is looking good. Media description is young attacking midfielder, but wow, this is maybe the best player I've ever had in an intake. I mean, I've had, in terms of potential ability, I've had current abilities come in higher than 100 as a starting point, but for 11th tier, this is insane. You know, funny thing that I've picked up on in my four years of doing this, I tend to have my best intake the first year before I've hired any staff. Is there a correlation? My sample size is too small. I've had four series, four goes at this. I've had four first years. My sample size is four. Not enough to say with certainty. But from what I've experienced, what I've encountered, my first intake is always really good. By the second year, I've started to bring in some staff, really bad staff. And it seems to then suddenly hurt our intake. And your second, third, fourth, fifth intakes are never as good as that first one was. And it's not until we've climbed a bunch of divisions and have better staff that I get better intakes. Factors that go into what your intake are, are numerous. There's a lot of variables. I'm not going to go through the whole list of them here. I have it. I have the list of everything that is known to be a contributing factor. Your staff is a big portion of it. Your club reputation, the league reputation is a big portion of it. We have no reputation as a club. We have no reputation as a league, but I don't have the staff. And I just wonder if that absent element makes a big difference. But let's go back for a second. We know Ethan McLaren is good, really good, <laughs> and can play any position on top. Uh, he's brave. He's heavily determined, which means he should develop without the training, without the, the quality. He just doesn't have a ton of speed. But for the next couple, two, three levels, despite lacking the physicals, it's not going to hurt him because he's still going to be faster and stronger than most of the guys he's playing against for the next few levels. But this technical ability, the 14 passing, the 15 technique, 13 free kick taking, <laughs> he's going to score some goals. 11 first touch, 11 heading, 9 finishing is not great, but it's, it's adequate. 12 dribbling, 10 crossing, 10 corners. I don't think you want to play him on top. He's not your finisher. I think that's probably the perfect spot for him right there. Asher number 10. Holy cow. Wow, what a player. What a player to get in this first intake. He's not it, though. We've got Brody Bick as well as our next best guy. Looks like he could be that lone striker on top. Oh my goodness, what a combination those two are going to be. 12 dribbling, 11 finishing, 13 passing, 14 technique. I think they're going to have a lot of goals combined. They're going to they're going to come together a lot. Uh, he's lighthearted on the personality, so he shouldn't have negatives, but probably won't develop a lot. 15 flair, though. 14 teamwork. Oh, but wait, there's more. And as I've got two guys kind of locked through the middle, I think we're going to be playing the first guy out on the wing. <clears throat> I need to learn their names. First touch, 15. Technique, 15. 19 determination, 19 flair, 15 brave. Oh my goodness, these guys are going to crush this dis division. McLaren's going to have to play on one of the wings. Probably the right-hand wing because there apparently is your left-hand wing. There's your four attackers. Craig McDonald, Ashley Jones. We'll look a little more closely here. <clears throat> and what we're dealing with, Ashley Jones. Now we're starting to see a drop off. This is somebody who has the physicals and some mentals that are certainly good for the level. Technicals aren't. But we've been getting wins with guys that have sixes. He's eights and nines mostly. So he's already, he's still going to be a technical upgrade compared to them. And he's going from a six acceleration to a 13 acceleration uh, in terms of what we had versus what we now have. Uh, Sam Brooks going to have to be a backup or retrained as a defensive mid. And then, then it starts to fall off. But the worst player we've got coming in is a 30. And here's the scenario that we have for, let's say, the medium term. The, the medium term of the next 
four seasons at least. Right now I have 18 players with a current current ability of one. I have one player out of those 18 that has a current ability of two. Last I checked a week and a half ago. They still exist. We still have them. They're not going anywhere. I definitely want to compare their stats to these guys' stats at the end of the season after the final four matches are played. Now, mathematically, we're, we're now eliminated. We did not win the last match. We drew the last match, but that win already came to one of those two teams on top, and that was it. We're, we are out. We are not going to get promoted this season. I would think we probably will win the four matches because this group, these 16 players, are going to instantly become the 16 players at the senior squad, you know, plus two Ken Lee on the bench, <laughs> anyone, uh, and whatever hole we need to fill. Goalkeeper would be the other one, I would think, right? Yeah, because we only got one here. So we have a senior squad now. We still don't have depth to it. Next year, next intake, we will have that depth. Can't play all those guys at once, though. So then you'll have the weaker players start to fill out our U18s. That next intake will fill out the U18s. So in a couple years. In a couple more years, you'll have enough to fill out the U21s. I don't know why I have a U23s, but by the year after, we'll start eliminating all those guys that have ones and everything who will be sitting in reserve status on the U23 is playing nothing meaningful. But it's going to take four years, five years, to fill up our roster at all the various levels, get rid of all those grayed out players, and have them. Now, as long as we're amateur, that's easy. The moment we start having to pay guys, that's going to become a different matter, and you're going to be careful on how you do that. But at Semi Pro, you're paying next to nothing, and we're certainly bringing in enough with a thousand seat filled out stadium that that's easy enough and I think we can easily get through the semi-pro stage so once we go professional that the costs are going to go up a bit and we got to make sure that we're not just uh, spending a ton of money on having a massive roster but in the short term you keep everybody so even our little 30s here they're going to be kept and they're going to be part of the side straight away our goalkeeper, Maxwell Grigg, 45. But his reflexes are a 14, going from two guys that have a 6 overall. So big step in the right direction. By the way, the reason for the blank uh, report on the intake has got to be because I have no staff to give us that report. Hence the uh, reason why it's blank. There was nobody to fill it out. Moment of truth, we're at Illigan, and so two days ago was the youth intake versus U18's annual game. 9-0. 6-0 at half. Uh, absolutely throttled our U18's. Let's see what we can do against a real team. We are in our road purples today. I only have one position that I've been unable to fill. I have one defensive mid in the intake. I don't have a second. So we are gonna have to convert someone to play the position. As of right now, I have an attacking mid, our best guy we couldn't get into the side, uh, playing the position and going to learn uh, the position as Brooks right off the bat has already banged one off the crossbar. We've only played seven minutes. We've already had a few attempts and the ratings are, are beginning to climb. We're fast. We react well. Uh, we've got reach. We've got technique. We've got a strong first touch. Atkins dribbles right in unchallenged. Jones gets a second chance at it. Keeper makes two saves. Now the weak point there is both of those shots were pretty much straight at the keeper. Webb intercepts, finds Jones. Jones lays it off. 
Off to the races for McLaren. The star, Atkins, again, straight at him from near point blank range. It's getting him on target, but he's not making him challenging. An injured Grig would be a problem for us. Uh, Bick. Bick looks to be pretty good. Finds McDonald there. Taken down in the box. Dangerous attempt there. I think that was more of a dangerous tackle than it was a miss the ball situation. And McLaren is going to step up and take and score first. Their first goal comes from the penalty spot. But you can't say that it wasn't deserved. We were all over them, uh, creating chance after chance in the opening minutes. We were incredibly dangerous. It was just a matter of time. It's a shame that the first goal came from the penalty spot, but I think that helps shake off the nerves. They've got a lead. What can they do now? McLaren sets up Bick. And I told you those two are going to combine a lot. And already McLaren with the assist. Bick with the easy volley finish. He made it look easy. It's not an easy skill, though, to get the foot out like that and get that on target. He does. He was very calm, very patient. He didn't put anything through it. He just got his foot in the right position and redirected the ball the direction it needed to go, and it's 2-0. Webb, Brooks. We will refine, before next season anyway, we will refine the tactic to take advantage of what skills these players have. Not that we're going to need to. I, I have a feeling that the quality of those key four or five guys is going to be such that those four or five guys, as long as they are still on our roster, which is not a given that they'll stay, those four or five guys are going to absolutely dominate for at least the next three to four seasons. The 11th, 10th, 9th, 8th tier. They're not going to be a match for those four guys. Now, the rest of the squad, the bottom end of the squad, the the guys off the bench, by the time we hit that ninth or 8th tier, they'll be adequate players for that level. But there's going to be enough quality with those four. We're not going to be winning games 9-0 as here it's three already. Uh, the opposition will get better <laughs> as we climb, but for now those four players are... And, and it's the attacking four. As long as they're healthy, they are going to score a lot of goals. And then tactically speaking, as McLaren... I don't know if he was trying to shoot there or if he was trying to pass. I think he was really waiting for the defense to bite and they never did and he ran himself out of room out of an angle out of options red nap long ball oh wow mcdonald that's what i was talking about with those four though so much quality compared to what's around us this isn't like the opposition who was you know a 10 versus r1 we got players here that are a 90 and an 80 and 70s versus their 10s and 15s. 4-0 halftime. Back into the highlights. McDonald goes close there. Nearly makes it 5. Staying at 4. I'm going to speed through this second half rather quickly. I've made a couple subs just to get a couple guys their debuts. But here is McLaren again. He is just so dominant compared to uh, the opposition. And he's going to create again and again and again and again and having most of that quality being in the front four is we're going to score loads of goals now our back end is weak and thin i have five defenders total that's it and majority of those five are among the five weakest players we had in the intake so in the future we're not going to bleed goals not, not for a few years, but this group will not get the job done themselves. Uh, offside flag was raised on that one. 23 attempts already. Played an hour. U18's level of demolishment. Is that a word? Demolishing? It's not that level of a... Yeah, we didn't destroy them. But 4-0. Absurdly comfortable. 
much better than the opponent. McDonald makes it five. Wow. Fantastic play. Defender should have headed that away. But at this lowest level, the quality is just not there. But McDonald, my front four, have that quality. My back seven aren't very good. But they're better than the average player in this league. They're as good as the best players in this league. But those front four are just miles ahead of everybody else. And, oh, can't wait to see the insane numbers that they can put up the next couple of years while we climb the ladder. And can we hang on to them? Because we went with the minimum security option. Just how soon will they be noticed? Because two of those players in particular have Premier League potential. Not current, but absolute Premier League potential. One player in particular, McLaren, looks like he can be a world-class elite player. One of the best in the world. So, man oh man, have we lucked out in, in getting him. Like I said, in four years of doing this, I think he might be the best player I've ever had in an intake. Ever. 31 attempts in the end. 5-0. Absolute thrashing. First of four matches before we end the season. I'm pretty sure we're going to get the 12 points. Nine more in the last three. Uh, McDonald ends up with three goals playing behind uh, Bick. Norris, yeah, wasn't great, but McFadden before he subbed. No, it was Jones, Ashley Jones. Our left wing didn't go so well here. Uh, not sure quite why that was, but if it continues to be an issue, I'll analyze what's going on on our left wing and, you know, make changes. But we're all over these guys. Absolutely crushed them. And though that front four or from today, it looks like three of those front four anyway, are going to be dangerous <laughs> for seasons to come, or as long as we can hang on to those players. Right now, we are a club with no reputation. Last I checked it, a month ago, our reputation was an eight. Out of 10,000, started at a one, it's growing. The lowest in the league, other than reserve squads that have no reputation themselves as they're not the senior squad but of all the senior squads they all had a reputation of 300 we're a long ways off from that they don't have reputation either how many clubs are going to notice what they're doing how many clubs are going to notice what's happening at our level how many clubs are going to scout our level and get a report on these guys at some point someone's going to notice someone's going to come knocking for now as we are an amateur side, they're going to offer free transfers. And those players are going to snatch on that opportunity. But we have minimum security in place. Minimum security means they have to offer more than they're worth. Offering a free is no, it's not in excess of. They have to exceed. That does not exceed. So I will hang on to players for that. So we will keep them for now, while we're amateurs, unless somebody comes in and offers money, and I don't see them doing that. But at some stage, these guys are going to get noticed. At some stage, we are going to be semi-pro or pro and start paying these guys and have them on actual contracts. And at some point, they'll offer more than they're worth. But for now, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, those four, they're going to be fun to watch for the next... Uh, however long we can hang on to them. That is going to do it for this episode. Next time, we're going to go straight to the end of our season. We're going to compare stats of four matches for these guys versus an entire season for the rest. Can we exceed the production of the whole rest of that current ability one, guys? Which, Ken Lee, still the only one above a one. He's now a current ability of three. Anyway, we'll see how how that went before we enter next season and if we keep this squad together yeah they're they're gonna crush this division next year uh, and we'll climb the ladder rather quickly just keeping an eye mostly on 
just how good we're doing. Are we hanging on to players? And what are our first few intakes while we climb the ladder? I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. And bye for now.